Hello, I am Jacko Fall, Master of None, and welcome to my A General Interest channel. However, if you are interested in motorcycles or motorcycle restoration, please head over to my sister channel, Too Old to Die Young. I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. And so, in a blatant and uncompromising attempt to gain likes, views and subscriptions, I'm going to climb aboard the watch collecting bandwagon. So let's get cracking and see what I've got. Yeah, so watches are so much more than just mechanical electro or even electro-mechanical devices to me. Um, and I guess their main function is to tell the time. But a watch is also jewellery, a status symbol, a thing of beauty, or a mechanical wonder. Some people even regard them as an investment opportunity. But watches and watchmaking have a rich history that's helped shape man's development um, if you think about it without the watch uh, navigation would have never happened um, in the way it does now an accurate timepiece really revolutionized how navigation was done on our globe and I guess like me watch enthusiasts derive pleasure from one or more of these attributes and they change almost on a daily basis um, sometimes I love them because they're just mechanical and they feel nice, sometimes because they look nice and yeah okay sometimes because they are a bit of a status symbol. But anyway, I'm not going to discuss watches that I've owned or lost or broken, but I will discuss the effect of fake watches, but only in passing because they did actually play a significant part in my journey. For years I didn't wear a watch, I mean why would I? I had a phone and that had a clock on it and because I was visiting factories as part of my job I had to wear visitors lab coats and I don't want to think about how many cheap watches I've lost in their pockets. This first watch I'm showing you is a Seconda which I bought on a ferry. Uh, I didn't have a working watch at the time and I quite liked it. Uh, it's just a simple quartz movement, nothing spectacular about that. It was cheap and I liked it, so I bought it. I think it was about £20, you know, when £20 really was £20. And uh, I got some good wear out of that. It seems really small now when you compare it to the next watch I got, which is my Rotary. Um, but in actual fact, if you compare them, the watch face itself, the actual diameter of the actual readable bit is the same as this one, but this feels a lot more chunkier. Now this is a rotary um, Aquaspeed and these were selling for about £150 and I saw this one in a local retailer at £95 and ooh, I do like a good bargain. It's a bit of a homage to a well-known Swiss watch brand. Um, I guess it looks a bit like a, a dive watch from them. I'm talking about Rolex. Did I mention that? But I couldn't afford a Rolex. Um, it's just a simple quartz watch, but it does say it's waterproof on the back. Ooh, uh, that's a bit dangerous, but there you go. But anyway, I wore this a lot, this uh, Aquaspeed. It was my main watch. And then I came across another one at the same shop, and that was on sale as well. And it was a similar price, but it actually was a retailing at a more expensive price. And that is the second Aquaspeed I got. Now this one is a bit dressier and I have worn this watch to death. I probably wore this non-stop for maybe three years. Um, I just liked it. The bezel's now quite worn out. It's a bit loose. But, um, you know, it's been a nice watch. And one thing I really like about this particular watch is this secret clasp mechanism that this particular one has. And that opens up like that so that you don't have a traditional opener and to be fair to the brand I mean you know this straps had a lot of on and off and it still has a good solid clunky click to it um, again a quartz movement nothing remarkable um, and so now I will move on to my next one which is my first if you like proper watch but just before I do that I really ought to uh, mention um, Rotary as a brand 
Um, they're not known throughout the world as, as well as many other brands, but here in the UK, Rotary is quite a strong brand. It's got a lot of connections to the World War II because it was one of the brands which was used by the British Army. And my dad always used to swear by the brand. And so, you know, it's got a good uh, legacy. And the other thing about it is that they, although it's a British company, they call themselves a Swiss watch manufacturer because that's where they originated. So I'm not sure if they're still built in, in, in Switzerland or assembled there as many watches are but they they still sort of really hang on to that we are a Swiss watch brand when they're not really British design Swiss watch but I'm not sure that's true but that leads nicely into my next watch talking of brands who pretend to be Swiss but are British um, we come to this Christopher Ward Trident one of the early ones now this brand, Christopher Ward, their marketing has been absolutely superb over the years. They came in at a sort of reasonable entry level price watch and then they've steadily climbed more and more into luxury watch prices. But this is an early one. Again, I like my bargains. This was uh, on a, I think, 40% off in their Christmas sale. Um, it's the Trident and it has either a Solita uh, SW201 movement or possibly an ETA28242 movement which Chris Ward uh, were using at that time. I think they now have their own movements but uh, they were standard movements, really good movements. Um, this particular one, um, they did this in a variety of these same colour watches. There was a blue one, I think a green one and this red one. I didn't have a red watch and at the time I used to wear a red striped shirt a lot and I thought oh that'll match very nicely and it does. Um, two things to say about it, um, one um, I don't like the strap that came with it, it's a uh, quick release bracelet but it's not, it's a leather strap and it, it does have a tendency to come undone and I noticed that you can't really buy these anymore um, and it clips on. I quite fancy putting a bracelet on it, um, but I never got round to it. I really ought to. And to be fair to Chris uh, Ward, when I had this watch, I actually caught it while I was trying to get some coins down from between my car seat, and I accidentally pulled the bezel off, which is not good. And there was also a huge scratch on the crystal. So I sent it back, um, not under warranty, but just thinking, well, you know, I'll have it repaired because I like the watch. And to be fair to the company, they repaired it, replaced the bezel and sent me sent me it back, including a brand new crystal. And the old parts, as the service people do, were in the box when it came back. So I got a secondary uh, nice watch box with it. Not as nice as the original one. But, you know, that's, that's pretty good service. And I, I really ought to get around to getting another Chris Ward watch because they are really, really nice watches. And um, the one I really want is the Pilot one, but uh, I can't find one. I think it's called the C60. But anyway, that's my Chris Ward Trident. Uh, waterproof, screw down, crown, uh, nice watch. Now, what I have here is what I consider to be one of the best value watches you can buy. This particular one is a Steinhardt Ocean 1. Um, you can see what it's trying to be and it often gets confused for that particular brand when I'm out and about. It's just so well made, it's chunky, um, the finish on it is absolutely excellent, it keeps really really good time. Well it should do, it's another one of these watches that's got the Solita SW200 but this time the Elabore movement, um, really good movement and just a pleasure to wear this watch. The bezel's good, it's nice and tight, uh, unidirectional, um, it goes one way only. And uh, you know, value for money, £370 delivered to me from Germany. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, another great watch at that sort of bargain price. Um, what more can I say about it? It's uh, so it's got a screw down crown. I think I mentioned that. It's a nice weight. It's got nice back to it. Yeah, just a really, really good, you know, excellent value watch. 
I'm sure the watch enthusiasts amongst you will recognise this immediately. This is my only luxury brand. Mm, luxury brand? Yeah, I guess so. Amiga um, Seamaster. It's got the Seamaster 2500 uh, Amiga movement in it. Um, it's everything you would expect from a quality brand watch. The strap's superb. The watch is superb. Now this particular one is quite rare because this has got the wavy face dial. I don't know if you can see that. It's also got the um, red writing graphics to the top of there. And this is a, a crossover watch. It was between two particular models. Um, and they were using bits from the old watch and bits from the new launch. And this is known as the James Bond Casino Royale watch. It's the unofficial James Bond Casino Royale watch because I think that was a black one. But the one that um, was worn throughout the film by Daniel Craig for most of the film was this exact model. And there's a bit in the film when... Um, Vespa says, you know, oh lovely watch, what is it? A Rolex. He goes, no, it's an Amiga. And uh, this is the watch he was wearing. It's an expensive watch. Is Rolex. Amiga. Beautiful. Yeah, another great watch. Um, again, <laughs> I paid £2,000 for it when it should have been 2400 because work were doing a promotion and you got 20% off at a local jeweller's so I took advantage of that and bought this watch and as I say, because it had been quite rare um, I persuaded her indoors, it was an investment piece I wear it when I go out but to be honest, having that sort of value and I don't know how people go on with these watches of hundreds of thousands of pounds um, I just get so scared when I come home I wake up in the middle of the night and go did I put my watch back? Oh dear, oh dear but anyway um, it's, it's not that dear but even so, you know, very nice watch After a bit of a lull in the old watch collecting yeah, probably two years after the Amiga this one came along um, this was a case of somebody who knew I was interested in watches and interested in Jaguars decided to get this as a gift for me. Now I wouldn't normally buy a quartz watch as I'm uh, strictly in the mechanical watch uh, camp. I, ju I just think what you get for your money, all those components, the technology, the manufacturing, the history, it's just all part of the experience rather than just telling the time. And this is some generic uh, quartz watch, who knows where it came from. But it's actually Jaguar Cars endorsed one, or rather their Jaguar Enthusiast Club watch that they were selling. It's just a quartz cheapie, I guess. About £100, pounds, um, almost certainly because of the connection to Jaguar, but there's really not much more to say about it. I wouldn't have chosen it personally, but uh, you know, thank you very much for the person who bought it for me. It was my wife! And then we're on to the watch that everybody has to have in their collection, the Seiko 5. This one was a day date one, it was on special offer through Amazon, and I thought, oh, I like that. In fact, I bought two because my uh, friend, he uh, he really likes watch collecting as well. And when I showed him it and how cheap they were, these were only about £219. And um, they were on special offer at 104 So as I say, I bought two of them. The SNK 10 Movement, I believe. SNK A 10 Movement, Seiko 5. It's a day date. Um, I've sort of got a love-hate relationship with it really I and mean, it's got the see-through back and everything uh, the strap is just mm, I don't know it just feels you know like those ones you buy the cheapy replicas off the beach it feels like that and the other annoying thing for me was I didn't really look at the dimensions I just thought I look at the price idiot <sighs> buy in haste repent at leisure on my wrist it is really too small it's a nice dress watch had it been like a 41 or a 42 it would have looked great but it's like a big ladies watch in fact I wonder if my wife wants to buy it off me no I might give it to her anyway so that's the Seiko 5 and what did I say about not buying quartz watches <laughs> the watch I wear more than any other one this is my daily watch is the Citizen uh, Red Arrows endorsed 
watch if you don't know who the Red Arrows are if you're outside the UK they're our crack military display team and this is an anniversary watch that Citizen produced it comes in various different guises but uh, two reasons I bought it one quite liked it but mainly because I like me bargain and I was probably drunk on the flight coming back from Tenerife um, it was 40% off retail um, less another 20% I saw it going out and then a week later when we came back they still had a few left and what was happening was the pilots I think were buying them and selling them on eBay because they were so cheap and that really must hack off the um, the retailers of these watches because this was this was certainly a lot less than half price that I've seen it in shops come the only problem with it is that the, the sweeping uh, stopwatch hand um, which sets off like that and then you press it and it sweeps back round doesn't actually come back to the top anymore it's just sort of gone a second pass so I think it must have jumped a cog somewhere I really ought to get this back to Citizen and have that done I think I've got about three weeks left in the warranty to get that done so uh, hmm, I might do that this afternoon but anyway that's it that's the last I think of my quartz watches and uh, the next one I got was this Invicta um, nice big chunky watch again it's another homage type Invicta uh, display back they've got the nice um, counterweight for the wind mechanism yeah an all around nice watch um, I wear this quite a lot as well these were on sale at £199 they feature the Seiko NH35A automatic watch movement and this one was £150 again I think this was on another Amazon sale and that's the problem when you start buying watches on Amazon or on um, AliExpress because once you've bought one they keep offering all of these watches and I can't buy any more on the heels of that one of course they sent me another special offer which was the Grand Diver now this is a big big chunky watch it's huge it's heavy and it's just gorgeous um, I bought two of these one for Mike my friend because um, he liked it as well when we saw it usually in the pub when we've had a couple of beers and we see them on the thing and we buy them it's got the exact same movement as the other one the NH35 Seiko movement but it is huge and it's just if you want a watch to feel chunky on your wrist I would recommend this it comes in loads of different colours but I haven't got a yellow watch so I thought oh, I'll have a yellow one and uh, yeah yeah a real bargain so how much did I pay for that uh, oh, 88 pounds 88 pounds how can they make a watch like that for 88 pounds some people are going to say because it's crap no it isn't it's good quality you know the bezel works well the polish it's just great I mean the more I look at it value for money that's probably the best watch I've got Ah, now we're on to German watches again. Um, I was looking for a dress watch and this one popped up while I was in Hanover. Um, we were in a hotel overlooking this bar. Mm, a lot of my watch collecting seems to come around from being in bars. But anyway, um, we were in this bar and we just had a burger and I saw this jewellers across the road and I went across and I saw this one in the shop window and I thought, hmm, never heard of this. It's an automatic movement. It's, it's got a Myota. 821A movement um, Graf Zeppelin now I believe that this is the same company that actually made the Zeppelins the flying ships um, at the turn of the century or beginning part of the century um, nice movement nice watch it's got this nice retro cream dial if you can see that again it's got the show back I actually replaced the strap I hated the watch strap on this one it was sort of like an orangey alligator skin one and I bought this one um, yeah I've got that off uh, off Amazon or, or eBay or something just just because I thought I liked the brown to go with it um, this one is actually the Hindenburg model the L2 sorry the LZ129 Hindenburg automatic Zeppelin and I really really like that watch Oh, and here we go, controversy, love them or hate them, AliExpress, Pagani Design, well I, I love them, I bought this one um, after seeing a review channel, I think it was uh, Just One More Watch, the Scottish guy who lives in Australia, 
um, and I think he was raving on about them, the GMT movement that they've put it in these. This is a, uh, a DG5833 GM pearl movement, um, Chinese, but they're well rated. And this watch, I just, I just think it's great. It's got, you know, a really good dial. Um, it looks good. The loom is actually better than I expected. Good crystal. It's got the Cyclops um, date window on it. Value for money. It's got the showcase back like they do. Their own Pagani design strap. And I have to say, value for money, it's a great, great watch. I paid £88 for this. Um, where did I get this from? AliExpress, yes, and I bought two of them. Uh, again, my friend, he wanted one when he saw it at that price. They've gone up a bit now, but when you get them in the flash sales, they're there available. It's, uh, you know, another nice watch. And I would highly recommend these. The service from Bagani was great. We got two, and the one, this one, um, which was mine, I wore it a few days. And then when my friend came round for his, it wasn't actually working. And it was because some numpty hadn't pressed the crown in properly, and that was me, and it started firing up again. But I'd already put a complaint into Pagani, and they shipped me a replacement watch straight out to the UK. So uh, I tried to cancel it, which they thought they had, and about five days later, um, a third one turned up. And uh, there was a shipping address to send it back to the UK. It does have a couple of quirks when you're in the GMT mode or when you're moving the hands and you press the crown back in again, the hand jumps. Do you see that? Just a little jump. That same jump occurs when you're moving the hands when you press it back in again. It jumps. Do you see that? So the way to get around that is you turn it to the position you want and you've left it in that position, if you just roll that back just very slightly to the mid position and then press it back in again, it doesn't jump. So yeah, it's a quirk of the movement. It's not a big problem once you know that, but I bet a lot of people, you know, sent them back because of that. It just takes a little bit of uh, getting to know. But if you wear it a lot like I do, it's not a problem because it keeps incredibly good time. So um, it's not a huge issue to me. So that is the Pagani. I rate this watch really highly. I reckon having got this one in the Pepsi colour, I might be tempted next time they come to get the Batman version um, with the black and the blue. So that looks, is it black and blue and Batman? Yeah, I think it is. Um, that looks great as well. But Pagani really, really makes some great watches. The one I'd really like is the Daytona, but they only do that in the Quartz version at the moment. If they do that in the automatic movement I will definitely be buying one and so that brings me to my very final watch in the collection which is just a cheapy doesn't have a brand name on it it's a pilot's watch it was 75 pounds it's got a Miata watchman in it I believe yep um, 316L if that means anything to anybody um, but I like the face on it I wanted a day watch I couldn't get a C60 Chris Ward pilot watch that looks a bit like this and at 75 pounds I couldn't resist it so that's it that's that's all my watches um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this I know it's gonna be very very boring to some people but other people who like watches it's a Quite a big collection. I think I've got 20 watches, including the um, the fakes, which I'm going to um, do something with in the future, I think. Um, I might discuss them. I'm not quite sure what the legal position is in the UK, if you can even own them, but uh, I was gifted them. I certainly wouldn't sell them as originals. I'll try and pass them off. Um, they are what they are. So, um, yeah, that's the collection. It's a probably less than three and a half thousand pounds which is what a lot of people pay for one watch so I've got no regrets there and I guess this won't be the last but thank you very much for watching um, if you're interested in motorcycle restoration I have another channel called uh, Too Old To Die Young again the boring like and subscribe it's not a commercial channel it's just basically an interest channel for family and friends and anybody else who's interested so thank you very much once again and i'll see you in the next one